Hey guys, I'm all back again. Welcome to day six in a life with the Google Pixel Fold. Now I'm just gonna talk more about my experience with this phone and how I use it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's great for folding laundry, no pun intended. So it's nice to have a large screen just laying there on the bed so you can watch YouTube as you are doing chores, washing your face, doing the dishes, brushing teeth. This is what I typically do on a normal daily basis anyways, but instead of watching on a small screen like on most phones, it's nice to have a tablet in your pocket that you can open it up and enjoy a bigger viewing experience while you're doing these uh, mundane everyday chores. I personally don't use screen protectors on my phone. They already have a thin film on it. When you first set up the phone, they actually warned you not to peel it off. I know when the Galaxy Z Fold 1 or the original Z Fold came out, a lot of tech reviewers will try to peel off this uh, initial film on, uh, on the phone and it will actually break the phone. So now when you set up the phone, they warn you not to do that. And the pre-install film that comes with the phone is kind of like a bendy plastic thing. It's very reflective. If you're using outside in the sun, it can be challenging to see. So I don't want to slap another screen protectors on top of it. This me in general, I don't really use any screen protector or cases on my phone. These super expensive phone, I tend to be really careful and I never really drop them. And for some reason, when I had the Pixel 7a, maybe because it's cheaper, I don't care about it as much. Every time I get in and out the car or just do random things that I end up dropping that phone at least five or six times, even on a concrete, but so far it's still surviving. And the good thing about having cheaper phone is the back is made of plastic and it's more durable. Although I did manage to drop it on the front screen a few times. I've been lucky so far, but at least with the more expensive phone, I never really dropped them. So. No screen protectors, no case for me with the Google Pixel Fold. And the other day while I was driving, I'm currently protesting Google Maps because I feel like it always takes me the longest possible way and I get really annoyed by it. So I decided to use Waze instead, even though it is owned by Google as well, but at least it's a separate app and a separate team. Well, I heard they were combining the team anyways, but either way, I do want to try like a different app just because I'm so annoyed with Google Maps. And as I was using Waze on this phone, just driving on a highway, the GPS was acting up, I think it was drifting or something, because as I was driving, it's telling me to randomly get off and exit unnecessarily, even though I don't need to. And even when I'm in the middle of driving and I already passed the exit, it's just constantly telling me to get off the exit. I think it was just spazzing out or something, and it was super annoying. And then enough happens to just turn off the app and uh, defaulting back to Google Maps anyways. I feel like this is Google's way of uh, forcing people to use Google Maps instead because Google Maps works fine. I just feel like it takes me very long routes. And even on the way back, I tried booting up Waze again just to make sure it was just like one time thing, but I was still having the same issue. It just keep recalculating routes unnecessarily and it just keeps spazzing, telling me to get off this exit, get off this exit. Every few seconds, it's super annoying. You're driving, you just want to listen to your music in peace and not having the GPS yard you and Waze just does not work well in this phone for me, and I'm not sure why. Next topic I do want to cover is Banana Gate. This was a big issue in the Galaxy S23, but a lot of it is just like a misconception. I think the true Banana Gate is when, I guess if you're just like taking a picture really close of a text, then for some reason there's a shape of banana, but this only happened to like a few phones. But the people tend to take it out of hand if they like start putting your phone up to really close things. They are just gonna look blurry and that's not necessary banana gate. That is just depth of field, focal length. I don't know that much about camera terminologies, but I just know with the larger lens and you put it really close to an object, the edge is gonna get blurry. If you have a smaller megapixel camera and you put it up close, it's able to capture more of the surrounding. I'm not sure how the science behind that work, but even with the Pixel Fold, if you put your phone close to a picture of food or any objects, the edge is gonna look blurry. So the best way to take photos, close-up photos, is just to use the zoom-in lens, whether this is 2x, 5x, you just stand wherever you need to stand and just zoom in when you need to. And those are the best cameras that it is meant to be used. And anything else you use in between, you do like 6x or 9, 10, those are all digital zoom, if you're just like doing 6.5 or something like that. Digital zoom is relying more on like the computer. So a lot of time when you use that, the um, the photo quality may look blurry. So in general, just use all the default lens that is in the camera, whether it's uh, the wide angle, the main, 
the 2x to 5x so that is typically the best way to get the most optimized photos on any phones i guess but i do want to share with that because i know um, to this day i'm still seeing people complain about banana gate on the galaxy s23 but most of it is just people just putting their phone really close to an object and they see the edges blurry they think it's a banana gate but that's not really the case you just have to really um Think about how you're taking a photo. You can't just like, even realistically, you put your face really close to your text. Right? Things are going to look blurry, so you think about it that way. It's kind of the same concept. And so far, my biggest complaint with the, with the Pixel Fold is this is so heavy. And with any folding phone, I guess, with a flipping phone, is much better because those are smaller and lighter. But the Galaxy Z Fold, Z Fold and the Google Pixel Fold, it's just so big and heavy. It's hard to use with one hand. If, puts a lot of stress on my pinky finger when I'm holding it. Getting in and out of the car, it, it is a challenge, especially you wear basketball shorts. I always have to worry about like, falling in and out of my pocket. So every time I enter or leave my car, I always make sure to hold the phone in my hand. So you do have to take extra precautions when uh, handling these larger, bulkier, heavier phones. This me personally, I prefer lighter phones. These ultra phones are cool. They get the biggest specs. They get all the high-end specs, best camera crazy 100, 100x zoom and all that but you know sometimes i just prefer the base model it's lighter it's easier to use more optimized for normal everyday people who don't claim to be pro or max people so the is photo phone are nice in theory i don't think it's always uh, optimal for a lot of people it's more for the uh, hardcore super fans who really want to go crazy but this wraps up day six in the life of the Google Pixel Fold for me so far. Battery, oh, for my first six days, I'm still getting anywhere from 10 to 14 hours. So it is okay. I mean, you can just still charge it up. The charging speed is not that fast, but you plug it in here and there. It should help you last throughout the day. And on day six, I noticed last night when I was sleeping, I had YouTube playing, just have some white noise playing in the background for my kid to go to sleep. And I went to bed and my phone was at 30%. And even with YouTube playing in the background and my cable plugged in, I have adaptive battery charging off. And by the time I woke up at like 7 or 8, so that's like 3 or 4 hours later, my phone was only at 94%. I'm not really sure why I'll continue to monitor that. Maybe it's just playing stuff in the background and charging. Isn't that optimized? I experienced that a lot with the Pixel 7a, maybe just overheating or overworking. So I noticed with Pixel phone, if you don't use it and you charge it, it will be fine. But if you're actively using the phone, the speaker, or just scrolling around, the charging speed does reduce significantly because the phone gets hot and is doing a lot of extra work. So something minor I do want to share there, but if you're spending $1,800 with a for a phone, you don't want to deal with these little things. So these are the things I do want to point out for you guys. All right, this wraps up day six. Let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns. Anything else you guys want me to cover? Please check out day five if you haven't already. Remember to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.